Now that we've talked a bit about some of the basics in parallel streams internals, namely the splitting and combining and pooling, let's talk about another interesting topic, which is the order of processing. So this again comes kind of back to this issue of what you can change and what you can't change. And order of processing is a very interesting topic. So the Java Streams framework, and most particularly the Java Parallel Streams framework, allows for some variability in the order of processing while still allowing determinism where needed in the results of that processing. You're probably going, what the heck is he talking about? So it turns out that you don't have control over the order in which the little chunks that are created by splitterators are processed by the underlying common fork join pool and the threads and the cores and so on. That is out of your control, short of rewriting the common fork join pool in the streams framework. So you just have to be aware that that processing order could be as random and non-deterministic as is seen fit by the people who are implementing the underlying infrastructure. And that's by design. You want to give the hardware and the low-level operating system kernel software free reign to order things in whatever order it deems most efficient and most scalable. However, we still are able to control the order in which the results are presented to us. So the order in which things are done could be a pure random. It's not really random, it's just optimized. But we can control the output order if we choose. Sometimes we don't choose to do that, but we have the ability to choose that. So again, what does it mean to be non-deterministic? It means that an external viewer wouldn't know ahead of time how things were implemented unless they knew how the, the black box of scheduling and processor core allocation and so on was done. So it would appear random. Again, it's not really random, but it would appear non-deterministic. And you can look up more about non-determinism here. That's one of the great benefits of parallelism, by the way, is non-determinism. It's also one of its headaches because when things go awry, it's sometimes hard to figure out what happened because each time you run the code, you'll get a different order of operations and it makes debugging a little bit tricky. So the point here is once things are split up into their little atomic sized chunks by the splitterators, those chunks are handed off to the common fork join pool and on any given run, the chunks could run in different orders. And you're not supposed to care and you don't really care because you don't have any control over it. So even if you give the same input over and over again, you could get different processing orders depending on various factors. And programmers have little or no control over the order in which chunks are processed. So that's okay. And again, just to recap, why do we do this? Because it enables optimizations at different levels. So for example, probably the best example, we talked about how the common fork join pool supports this optimization technique called work stealing. And if a worker thread in the common fork join pool runs out of work to do in its queue or its double-ended queue, its deck, rather than just sitting there and going, well, I'm just going to sleep idly until someone gives me something to do, the worker thread will be proactive and it'll start looking around to find other worker threads who have decks that have stuff that they aren't working on. And once it finds that, it'll go ahead and steal that something, it'll, we'll talk later how that works, but it'll steal a, a work item from another worker thread's deck and it'll start to run. And the, the order in which threads steal is random. And that's by design because you don't want them to always go to the same place each time because that could have contention points built up in the system where you have single points of contention where everybody descends on the same place to go to try to steal, which would mean that you'd have slower code because you have to lock everything. So they randomly steal. So that's a good example of a non-deterministic algorithm that will randomly steal stuff. So if you run the same code over and over again, you may get different results every time based on the random number generator that's occurring in deep in the bowels of the common fork join pool. And we'll talk more about the common fork join pool and how it steals stuff with its work stealing algorithm later. So that was a quick overview of processing and order of processing. So the key things to remember, the order in which work is processed, the, the chunks are run, is non-deterministic and you have no control over that, short of rewriting everything yourself, which you don't want to do. But the order in which things are, the results appear, you can control if you choose to.